Okay, good morning guys, time for another video. <clears throat> um, I'm going to be replacing both my front and rear wheel speed sensors on my 2017 Indian Springfield, but this procedure should be the same for all the Thunderstroke uh, models. Um, so lately I've been having an issue where the ABS light stays on and um, uh, my speedometer and odometer uh, stop working you know um, uh, intermittently but now like uh, lately they've just not been working so I did some uh, <clears throat> oh bef and then before replacing the sensors what I did was I actually went ahead and cleaned them thoroughly so the front and the rear with some contact cleaner I you know usually or not usually but sometimes uh, dirt can get in the way and you know just cause faulty signals so I went ahead and cleaned that but that didn't work either so I'm guessing my speed sensors are faulty. Um, I also read in the forums that the front speed sensor is linked to the odometer. So if your odometer stops working, it's very likely that the front one is faulty. And the rear speed sensor is linked to the speedometer and the ABS. Uh, so if your speedometer is not working, it's very likely that the rear speed sensor is faulty. Uh, so I went ahead and bought a uh, both speed sensors rear and front you can buy them um, directly through the Indian website through your dealer or they sell it for 210 US dollars it's kind of expensive uh, each right 210 each I found it on, and you can find it on eBay or Aliexpress I bought mine on Aliexpress for about $80 each so it's still expensive but a lot cheaper than 210 uh, I'll put uh, the part numbers uh, and links were where you can buy them in the description okay so I actually went ahead and already replaced my front sensor um, it's quite easy to do actually the rear ones harder uh, I removed my headlight bucket and SL you need to do that because the connector for the speed sensor is inside the headlight bucket and for the fairing models like the your chieftains and roadmasters I'm sure it's the connector is somewhere inside the fairing so I went ahead and removed that. I already have a video showing you how to remove the headlight bucket. I'll put a link in the description so you can take a look at that. Uh, second is the speed sensor is always on the left hand side. Uh, so to access the speed sensor, you're gonna have to remove the, your caliper cover, right? Um, and uh, um, I've already done that. So let me just show you on the right hand side. So this is what it looks like. The two uh, 13 mm uh, bolts here so you're gonna need a 13 mm deep socket to remove these two and then behind this there is a 10 mm hex uh, screw and you're gonna need a 10 mm wrench uh, to get that out and then the cover just comes out so I've removed it it's you only need to remove the left hand side and then you'll see the ABS pulse wing here and then just underneath the fork you should see this um, sensor which is held together with a 5mm hex uh, bolt so you just need a 5mm bit to get that out so this is actually already the the new speed sensor I've removed I, I removed the old one actually I, I haven't completely removed from the bike but I've kind of tied it here so this is the old one and I hooked in the new one you can kind of trace the cable from the old sensor back um, all the way inside the headlight bucket um, and you should see, you should be able to find it. Let me just focus here. It should say front wheel, right? So that is a front wheel sensor. So take out the old connector and put in the new sensor connectors. So I've already done that, so this is the old one. Um, so I poked in the new one. And why I didn't, so, and what I did was I went for a short ride, uh, obviously without my headlight bucket. Um, so I, I went for a short ride and I noticed my odometer started working again. So, yep, my hunch is correct. My front speed sensor was faulty. So now I'm going to take out the front speed sensor completely. There's some cable ties that are holding it together. So cut those, take out the front wheel sensor, front wheel sensor, speed sensor completely. And the new one, I'm going to cable tie it. And then you can go ahead and put the headlight bucket uh, and the nacelle back. Again, refer to the other video to do that. The rear speed sensor is a little tricky uh, because the speed sensor, obviously take out your saddlebags. 
so you have better access. The, the rear speed sensor is here. Again, very similar to the front one. Again, held together held with a 5mm hex uh, bolt. So you can take that out without having to remove the exhaust. You just need, you won't be able to, uh, you'll probably need a, a small Allen wrench, Allen key, sorry, and 5mm Allen key, and you should be able to take that out. But the more difficult part is that cable, that connector, actually somewhere all the way underneath the battery box and underneath the ECU and the fuse box as well. And according to the manual, I need to take out the front, the rear fender. Um, so that's a little bit more work. The other thing, uh, just to keep in mind is, when you take out the speed sensors, uh, there'll be a little shim between the sensor um, and um, the, thick, the bracket and the shim kind of looks like this it's a very thin one and the, the point of that is to just create a gap tiny gap between um, the sensor and the ABS pulse ring so your bike may have one two or maybe even three shims they're very thin I got I got some spares this is the part number if you want to order some spares five two five nine one zero six um so yeah when you remove the sensor make sure not to lose these shims and put them back again uh, so there should be a gap between the sensor and the abs pulse ring of about three quarters of a millimeter but a plus or minus quarter so it should be anywhere between half to one millimeter and it's going to be hard it's gonna be very hard to see it on camera here but if you look at it from this angle you should be able to see a tiny gap between the sensor and the abs pulse ring and these shims kind of adjust that gap right so make sure not to lose the old shims okay <clears throat> now to uh, get back to the rear sensor i went ahead and removed my saddlebags the seat those are very easy to do okay <clears throat> so i've removed the seat and the saddlebags um i really can't see the the uh, speed sensor connector it's i can't see it from this angle probably I uh, probably way below so I'm gonna start by removing the <coughs> the um, VCM and the battery box the battery okay so <coughs> I finally managed to get the battery out now let me see if I can I still can't see the connector so I guess I'm going to have to remove the fender I have already done this before and uh, I've, there's also a video actually I believe it was my very first video on YouTube so I'll, I'll just put a link in the description um, to the video where uh, you can see how to remove the rear fender. So let me go ahead and, and uh, do that and I'll be back. Okay, <clears throat> uh, rear fender is off. Um, and you know, just to recap, you'll see it in the other video, to remove the rear fender on the right hand side, you're gonna have to remove the lower panel as well. And to remove the lower panel, you need to remove the passenger floorboard and the rear uh, highway bar, crash bar. On the left-hand side, you don't have to uh, remove the lower panel and the floorboards and the crash bar. You can leave that. But on the right-hand side, you, you're going to have to do it. Okay. And this should give us a better view of the speed sensor wire. Right. <clears throat> so back on the left hand side this is the speed sensor there's still the old one I haven't removed it yet but you can see the cable going it comes up here and this is the cable and it kind of just disappears uh, into the you know underneath of the motorcycle under the battery box and everything so let me go the other side because on this side the right side we have removed the lower panel so you can see the belt and I'm gonna, I'm gonna just try to show you. I can see the connector from here, but you, you need a flashlight. So you can see that right there. That cable, oops. right, the blue, yep, yeah, that's the connector. So that, that wire comes from the other side, from the left-hand side, from the speed sensor. And uh, it there's that's the connector there. It's still impossible to, put my hand in and just remove it so a couple of more things to do 
the battery's out, but the battery box is still in. Right, so we're gonna have to remove the battery box and then we should be able to access the connector from, from the top rather than having to squeeze in from the side. So to remove the battery box, the ECM, let me get the flashlight again. The ECM at the bottom is, is connected to the battery box or it's, it's, it's attached to the battery box. So we're gonna have to do a couple things. We're gonna have to remove the multi plugs from the ECM. There should be two, and that one you can you should be able to access from the from this side. I'll I'll show you, I'll try to film that. So remove the multi plugs, and then the back of the battery box. Here you see that nut. That is the another fuse box. Uh, I believe it's called the JK fuse box. Um, that's attached to the battery box as well. So we're just gonna undo that nut and just move the fuse box out of the way the multi plugs to the ECU disconnect and then we can just lift up the battery box and that should come out with the ECU attached to it and then below all that will be the connector to remove the battery box there are two fasteners here I've already removed that. And then there are two fasteners in the front of the battery box, right there, one. And then there's another one somewhere there. So there's two, two more fasteners. So we remove those two, and then we should be able to pull all that out. Okay. Okay, I think I figured out a way to reach the connector without having to take out the battery box, the ECM and disconnect the ECM multi-plug and remove the fuse box out of the way. I, I think I figured it out, figured it out of the way. So, <coughs> this little, uh, this little uh, mud guard, uh, remember these uh, was sitting here. It was, I, I already removed, but it was pried in here. And this is to protect the, uh, all the electrical components from, all the water and mud and this was sitting here uh, and it was pried this little tab was pried into these little slots here and then same on the other side and then this little plug here was bolted to this uh, using with this little two screws and two nuts so I just removed these two nuts. This came out, this detached, and then I just pried these little tabs, one on this side and one on this side, which were you know, in one of these gaps. I just kind of bent this kind of a little bit, it's pretty sturdy, but you can bend it a little. So I pried it out of those gaps and then pulled it out. What that lets you do is, <clears throat> you can now put your, oops, my hand is coming. You can now put your hand from here And it'll reach the. Let me show you. So I'll show you. You can reach the multi. You can reach the connector uh, this way. Another way uh, you could probably make your life even easier by <coughs> jacking up the bike a little, so the swing arm falls down a little, and that'll give you. If the, this, the swing arm will fall down a little and that will give you more space if you got big hands but you I think you can reach and just take out the take out the connector so I've already taken out the connector I don't know if you can see it let me yep I've disconnected it now go to the other side and oops, not covering that and this is the wire, so I, I should be able to pull this out. Since I've already disconnected the connector, I can pull this out. There's a little nut here, a clip holding this wire in place. So I take this nut out, take this wire out, and then finally take out the old sensor from the wheel. Okay, let me do all of that. Okay, so this is the speed sensor. Uh, it's a five millimeter hex bit. 
I've already cracked it uh, loose, so I'm just removing it fully. The reason I'm showing you is I just want to show you. Um, so take this out, and this should just pull out, and there'll be a shim or two, maybe two or three shims, and it will fall down. Yeah, you see, it, it's there. Right? Uh, so this is the sensor. Ah. And the shim will sit here. You might have two shims, and then the screw will go through the hole. So that, that the shim add, sh the shim is what adds the gap. Okay, so save that. You're gonna want to reuse the shims. So this is free now, um, and I'm gonna pull it up and I'm gonna put the new sensor in. Okay, so let me do that, and I will get back. Okay, all done. New sensor is in. I put the shim as well. Um, put the bolt back in. Cleaned up the wires, so I zip tied the, the the sensor wire um, to the brake line, and also put this clip back. And the connector is obviously connected uh, underneath. Uh, all done. And uh, I've just covered up. I'm gonna resume tomorrow because it's getting dark. Okay, see you guys tomorrow. Okay, morning guys. It's a new day. Uh, time to put everything back. Oh, both the sensors are changed. Uh, right yesterday uh time to put everything back just want to remind you guys that <coughs> um you can save yourself the trouble of removing your battery and stuff um because remember you all you need to do is take this little mud guard out so just just uh before you take it out just take photos of how it sits in these grooves on this side as well as this side so when you put it back it you know where exactly you put it back and then uh, remember I showed you, you just need to undo these two nuts and take this little uh, connector out and then you should be able to pull the mud gut out and then you can reach from the back with your hand uh, to the speed sensor connector. So yeah, now time to put everything back. I, I just put the mud gut back, I bolted these in. Now I'm going to put the fender back and I'll put the battery in last but yeah, you don't need to take the battery out so save yourself the trouble. Um, Again, refer to the video, uh, the links in the description to, uh, you know, to uh, put the fender back. Let me just go ahead and do that. Okay, fender installed, saddlebags put on, everything done. I also put my battery and ECU back, connected all the terminals. Uh, but to change the sensor, remember now you, you have a shortcut, you don't need to remove the battery. Um, next, my front sensor. I just put uh, cable ties to make it nice and clean, right, so the, the wire. And then install the caliper cover here. So the two 13mm bolts, uh, you need a 13mm uh, socket, deep socket to tighten that. And then finally there's a 10mm bolt here that screws on from behind, you, you'll feel it. You'll need to use a 10mm uh, wrench to tighten that. That's it. Uh, then um, uh, put back your your sensors connected here to the connector. Put back your headlight bucket and your nacelle. Uh, the video for instructions on that is in uh, the link for the video is in the description. So take a look at that video to see how to put the nacelle back on. And then put your seat back on and then take it for a test ride. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to take it for a test ride and um, hopefully all my speedometer odometer works and my ABS light stays off. I'll uh, come back after my test ride and uh, uh, give uh, to tell you how it goes. Okay, bye. All right, I just took it for a quick test ride, maybe uh, not too long, maybe uh, two, three kilometers. And so far, all good. My speedometer works, my odometer works, and uh, ABS light went off. So looking good so far, everything. Um, I'm gonna obviously ride for another week and then hopefully uh, the problem's permanently gone. All right, guys, hope this was helpful. Um, you know, uh, if you like this video, please hit the like button and uh, subscribe to my channel. I'll be posting more videos on uh, my motorcycle maintenance and any upgrades I do. I also have a Triumph Tiger 1200, um, which I'll be posting videos about soon as well. All right, guys, take care. Have a good day. Bye-bye.